Don Old Trump has been disavowing Project 2025 for months now. But every day he's out on the campaign trail, he not only shows how bad dementia is stepping in, he leaks a little more about how he is 100% behind Project 2025. The rally in Erie on Sunday clearly shows that Trump is losing it and is starting to say the quiet parts out loud, declaring war on black people, liberals, union members, workers, in short, everyone but the 1% who foolishly believe he's never coming after them. I'm going to show footage of the radical constitution shredding things Trump said yesterday that would doom any other candidate, but about which corporate media says, ho-hum, ho-hum. Here's Trump with the Daily Double, dehumanizing both black people and immigrants. Last week, a lot of people came in from the Congo, a big prison in the Congo in Africa. Okay, so first of all, you know the Congo is the only country in Africa that Trump could name. Second, of course, it's a total lie, but it's the meta discourse that is so disturbing. It is nothing short of the black people are coming. The black people are coming. My question is, are they going to take black jobs? Also, if you want an indication of why people are leaving his rallies, take a look at the complete lack of attention during this statement. The biracial couple right here is particularly interesting. But the Congo reference is also important because it fills in Trump's white nationalist fascist discourse in this next clip and makes clear that Trump is declaring war on black people and minorities. But they have to be taught. Now, if you had one really violent day, like a guy like Mike Kelly put him in charge, Congressman Kelly put him in charge for one day. Mike, would you say, he's right here, the whole, it's a chain of events that's so bad. One rough hour, and I mean real rough, the word will get out and it will end immediately. End immediately. You know, it'll end immediately. Yes, this is the guy who whined daily. He literally went out to the press and whined about how poorly he was treated by the New York justice system. This simpering fool complained about the temperature in the courthouse. But now he's advocating for organized, coordinated police brutality against blacks and other minorities. But here again, note the complete and utter lack of enthusiasm on the part of this meager audience. They do not clap when he calls for violence, like he thought they would. They clap when he says, it will end immediately. Yeah, well, who's not in favor of crime ending immediately? The question remains, are you willing to shred the Constitution to do it? This crowd did not exactly give him a ringing endorsement there. Look at their bored faces. These demented ramblings are not going to get the attention of mainstream media. But Trump declaring war on unions and workers? That part did not go over with the crowd. And you know, it's going to lead to great things. A lot of people don't give. I know a lot about overtime. I'd hated to give overtime. I hated it. I'd get other people. I shouldn't say this, but I'd get other people in. I wouldn't pay. I hated it. This is going to lead to a lot more. I think it's going to be economically positive, but I'm not even doing it for that reason. I'm doing it because like, like the no tax on overtime, it's something so good. Notice the looks on their faces when Trump tells them that he hated paying workers what they deserve so much that he would just replace them before they qualified for overtime. Then he tries to tell them that not getting paid overtime will be good for the economy. Now, to his credit, his addled brain quickly catches on that he said the wrong thing, that even MAGA morons are going to recognize that he is asking them to suffer in order for the stock market and rich people to do better. So then he shifts gears and tries to tell them as paternalistically as possible, oh, you get killed on taxes with overtime. I'm trying to save you from that. Well, they are not buying it. 
The pushback was almost immediate. The AFL-CIO said in response, this isn't a gaffe and he didn't just misspeak. Trump said this in Michigan on Friday and Pennsylvania on Sunday. Trump cut overtime for millions of Americans as president and his Project 2025 agenda will do it again. Pennsylvania lawmaker Malcolm Kenyatta also weighed in, stating, Trump and Project 2025 are are all about cutting overtime pay for hardworking Americans. Vice President Kamala Harris, on the other hand, will stand up for working families. The worst job in the world right now must be Trump campaign staffer. Polling has already showed that a large majority of Americans oppose Project 2025. And Trump's job is to distance himself from it until he's elected. The problem is all those cheeseburgers and fried chicken is finally catching up with Don old Trump. All those little fat globules from the artificial cheese, not to mention the animal fats and cholesterol, are finally adding up, choking off the arteries whose job it is to feed oxygen to the brain. Whatever signal can get through, Trump now says. Filter mechanisms are all but gone, and what's left is the ravings of a corpulent narcissist who still believes he can shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Well, Donnie boy, you weren't on Fifth Avenue. You were on Sassafras Pier, and you did shoot someone. You shot yourself right in the foot. But I don't think you're going to get away with it. Not this time. And make no mistake about it. When you lose, you are going to jail. I'm Anthony Vincent Gallo for Occupy Democrats.